Well, welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of Lachish or Lachish. I am really excited to be here with you. I've been waiting a long time to talk about this particular event and this place. So at this biblical site, we'll be looking at the location of this place and why that's so important. We'll talk about the historical background of this location. We'll be looking at some of the amazing places of interest at this site. We'll see the key events in the Bible that took place here and we'll end with a faith lesson in order to learn the major lessons God desires from us at this important biblical site. So I think you'll find this video very enlightening and transforming to your life. Some major things happened here that are mentioned throughout the Bible, so we're going to be looking at these and some of the historical background and the location. So follow along in this important, really interesting video to see all that God did at this special place. Welcome to the Holy Land and this biblical site of Lachish or Lachish. This was the last stronghold that the Assyrians conquered before going to Jerusalem. And right here you can see the evidence of a siege ramp that the Assyrians built leading up to the top of the tell where they destroyed everyone and killed everyone. And then King Sennacherib, who then went to Jerusalem from the Assyrian king, and he was unable to conquer Jerusalem because God sent an angel through Isaiah and God was able to supernaturally preserve Jerusalem. But this was the last stronghold that the Assyrians took before going to Jerusalem. Amazing things here that we're going to see. We're going to see this walkway. We can see the city gate up here. Anyway, we're going to be showing you all about this tell here. So right here was the main entrance into the city of Lachish. Right through here was the main gate chamber. Now Lachish is in the foothills or the Shephela of the Judean mountains about 18 miles or 30 kilometers from the Mediterranean Sea and about 25 miles or 41 kilometers southwest of Jerusalem. Lachish is regarded as the second most important city after Jerusalem in the southern kingdom of Judah and was strategically located on the Via Maris International Highway. It was a well-fortified military city with double walls and provided protection to Israel's southern region. Now some of the historical background of Lachish, it has two major settlement periods, a Canaanite and an Israelite settlement period. Lachish was first settled and inhabited by the Canaanites around 3000 BC. It was then conquered by the Israelites under Joshua during the conquest of the Promised Land. After the Kingdom of Israel was divided, Lachish became a thriving Israelite city during King Rehoboam's reign in around 920 BC, and around 10,000 people lived in the city at that time. It was destroyed by the Assyrians in 701 BC and then by the Babylonians in 587 BC. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about the Assyrian conquest and the things that happened here. Now, numerous pottery shards or ostraca were found at Lachish. One spoke of the fall of the close by city of Asaka, which is above the Valley of Elah, by the Assyrians. 
This realization must have sent fear into the hearts of those in Lachish. Another pottery shard spoke of a prophet, most likely Jeremiah. So we have some really amazing findings here. You can see these are replicas of pot sherds that were found that had writings on it. And it describes all about the events that took place here. And they're dated to the time of the Babylonians as well. Some amazing findings right here in this area. Writings and relief pictures at Nineveh, which is modern-day Mosul, reveal the destruction of Lachish. Interestingly, Ostraca pieces and other findings in Israel reveal the evidence of around 100 biblical names of people in the Bible that lived right here in Lachish. There are two caves filled with skulls close by to Lachish giving evidence of its destruction by the Assyrians in 701 BC. In 539 BC, the Persians defeated the Babylonians and allowed the exiles to return to Israel from 538 to 445 BC. Jerusalem and Lachish were reconstructed at this time, and we see evidence of this in Nehemiah chapter 11. Lachish was finally abandoned after the Hellenistic rule in Israel from around 332 to 167 BC. Now right here you can see the siege ramp where it arrived at the top of the tell wherein the Assyrians then could conquer the whole people of this area. Right here is where the Assyrians came up and the people here fought against them. Man, it was just the last stronghold before the Assyrians then went to try to conquer Jerusalem. Now, you have to understand something that's really amazing is that the Assyrians, they, they had never suffered a defeat. They were victorious all the time and they had wiped out every city in Israel except Jerusalem and then Lachish was the last one. So they had a perfect 100% record. And then when they got to Jerusalem, God supernaturally intervened to preserve the Israelites, but they weren't able to conquer Jerusalem, but right here is where they entered and then conquered the Israelites that were here at Lachish, the last standing tell city before they went to Jerusalem. Now let's look at some amazing things that happened here from the Bible. The king of Lachish joined four other kings to fight against the Gibeonites because they had made peace with Israel during the conquest of the Promised Land. And this is found in Joshua 10, 1 through 5. And then Joshua prayed that the sun would stand still so the Israelites would defeat the five kings who had gathered to make war against the Gibeonites and the Israelites. So the Gibeonites made a treaty with the Israelites and there were kings that were attacking the Gibeonites. So the Israelites then fought against those kings and one of those kings was the king of Lachish. And God caused the miracle to happen. Joshua prayed that the sun would stand still and that miraculous event did happen, and Joshua and his armies were able to conquer those five kings, one of whom was the king of Lachish. So Joshua and the Israelites then were able to conquer Lachish, and it says in Joshua 10.31, Then Joshua and all Israel with him passed on from Libna to Lachish, and laid siege of it, and fought against it. And the Lord gave Lachish into the hand of Israel, and he captured it on the second day, and struck it with the edge of the sword, and every person in it, as he had done to Libna. So right here at Lachish, then Joshua is able to conquer those Canaanites that then lived here. And then from that point on, then the Israelites would be the ones who would inhabit 
the tell here, the city of Lachish, and fortify it, and they would have it until around 587 BC. But it would be conquered in 701 BC by the Assyrians, but then the Israelites would come back and rebuild it, and then it was finally destroyed, as we mentioned, in 587 BC. Now, King Rehoboam fortified Lachish in about 920 BC after the kingdom of Israel was divided. So then Rehoboam came and fortified this city and made it into a city stronghold that would be a defense city on that Via Maris International Highway and it would pass right through here. So it was a city to protect Israel in its southern flank area. Now King Amaziah fled to Lachish after his defeat to the northern kingdom of Israel and was killed by his own countrymen in 767 BC. And this is found in 2 Chronicles uh, chapter 25. Now finally, God destroyed Lachish because of their continual rejection of God and sinful choices. It says in Micah 1.13, Harness the steeds to the chariots, inhabitants of Lachish. It was the beginning of sin to the daughter of Zion. For in you were found the transgressions of Israel. So Lachish became very immoral, very sinful. They rejected God. And so then God disciplined them and punished them. And that's why he allowed the Syrians to come here and conquer them because of their rejection to him. He had sent them prophet after prophet after prophet. First in the northern kingdom, they were warned, they fell, and then the southern kingdom didn't really listen, didn't heed, didn't take to heart what had happened in the northern kingdom. They continued in their immorality, idolatry. So once again, in 701, then God is going to allow Lachish to be defeated by the Assyrians. And God is sovereign, so he rose up the Assyrians to then punish and discipline the nation of Israel because of their rejection to him. We'll start from over here, going from the oldest and going down. These are the kings that reign. This is after the divided kingdom right here. Here we're standing on top of the palace which was mainly in the center of this city. Amazing to be here and think about this. Now the Bible story that I would mainly like to focus on is this destruction of this city, Lachish. Now Lachish was attacked and destroyed by the Assyrians in 701 BC. Now after Assyria conquered the northern kingdom of Israel and led them into captivity to Assyria in 722 BC, King Sennacherib set his sights on Egypt and Judah in 701 BC. It says in 2 Kings 18.13, In the 14th year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. So he had come, he had destroyed many cities in Egypt, and now he made his way up and he took all of the fortified cities in the southern part of Israel because he had already conquered the northern 10 tribes in around 722 BC. So now he set his sights on the southern kingdom of Israel, and then he moves his way up to Lachish. His goal was Jerusalem. His ultimate desire and pot of gold, so to speak, was Jerusalem. It says in 2 Chronicles 32, 9, after this, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, who was besieging Lachish with all his forces, sent his servants to Jerusalem to Hezekiah, king of Judah, and to all of the people of Judah who were in Jerusalem, saying, Thus says Sennacherib, king of Assyria, 
on what are you trusting that you endure the siege in Jerusalem? So in other words, Sennacherib was telling King Hezekiah, who was rebelling against him, why are you going to endure? Why are you going to try to put up with this siege that I'm about to do? I have a perfect track record. Everywhere I have gone, I have conquered every city. I have a 100% victory column, so to speak, under my belt. I conquer everything. In fact, Sennacherib was one of the most cruelest kings in the nation of Assyria. When they set out to battle, they were brutal with the people. They were cruel, they were mean, they beheaded. So they put the fear of Assyria in these cities that they would come to, and many cities would just give up. So he said, why are you going to endure this siege against me? On whom are you trusting? So he begins to kind of mock God and Hezekiah. Now, when the destruction of Lachish, as many as 50,000 people were tortured and killed when Sennacherib took it. Based on archaeological discoveries and writings in Nineveh, the Assyrians beheaded, burned, flayed, and impaled those they conquered. Those who escaped death were deported to Assyria, led by rings pierced through their lips. So they were brutally mean people. In the writings of Sennacherib, he mentions how his army penetrated fortifications using ramps, battering rams, mines, breaches, and siege engines. Now the evidence of these tactics can be seen right here at Tel Lachish. So over here to my right is kind of a higher, uh, kind of a plateau up here. And then there's kind of a little dip here. Then you can see the siege ramp right there. So the Assyrians built this ramp from right there up to the top of the tell. They took their battering rams up there, their machines. They were very sophisticated. They were the most sophisticated army of the day. They had all of the modern technology. So they went up to the tell and they destroyed it. And there were around 50,000 people that were destroyed in that. Now after destroying Lachish, then King Sennacherib set his sights on Jerusalem. But God supernaturally protected Jerusalem from the Assyrian conquest. So after King Sennacherib conquered Lachish and the southern cities of Judah, he set his sights on Jerusalem. The deliverance of Jerusalem in 701 BC under King Hezekiah's godly leadership is one of the most monumental and key miracles in Israel's history. Assyria rose to world domination and had conquered the northern kingdom of Israel, as we mentioned, and the southern cities of Judah. Jerusalem was the only city left in the whole region that had not fallen. Assyria was hungry and ready to devour Jerusalem by its merciless iron tooth war machine. It says in 2 Kings 19.8, then Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria fighting against Libna, for he heard that the king had left Lachish. Now the king heard concerning Turkaka, king of Cush, behold, he has set out to fight against you. So he sent messengers again to Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah. Do not let your God, in whom you trust, deceive you by promising that Jerusalem will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria has sent messengers to Hezekiah in Jerusalem, and he says, Do not let your God, in whom you trust, deceive you by promising that God is going to deliver the city, Jerusalem, out of my hand, says the king of Assyria. In 2 Kings 19.20, then Isaiah, the son of Amoz, said to Hezekiah. So this is during the time of Isaiah the prophet. He's a prophet during the time of Hezekiah's reign in around 701 BC when all of this is happening. So then Isaiah, the son of Amoz, said to Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Your prayer to me about Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. So. Hezekiah prays to God. He goes into the temple and he prays and he pours his heart out to God and he pleads with the Lord. And so God hears him and tells then Hezekiah through the prophet Isaiah that I'm going to help. Don't be afraid of the king of Assyria. It says in 2 Kings 19, 35, and that night in response to Hezekiah's prayer, and this is an amazing miracle, and that night the angel of the Lord went out and struck down 
185,000 of the camp of the Assyrians. So the Assyrians left here from Lachish, they go to Jerusalem, and they have the whole city of Jerusalem surrounded with over 185,000 troops, massive, massive. And so that night, then the angel of the Lord goes out and he kills 185,000 of these Assyrian troops. And when the people arose early in the morning, behold, these were all dead bodies. Then Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went home and lived in Nineveh. As he was worshiping in the house of Nisroch, his god, Adramelech and Sherezer, his sons, struck him down with the sword and escaped into the land of Ararat. And Eshardon, his son, reigned in his place. The defeat over Sennacherib at Jerusalem was a devastating blow to the Assyrian Empire, which caused it to spiral downward thereafter. Later, the Babylonian Empire would arise and become the new world dominant force. So what's amazing here is that Sennacherib, and, and the story is found in four places in the Bible, and if you can read it, it's really amazing, but basically Sennacherib mocks Hezekiah and the God of Israel. He says, I have this perfect track record. No one is gonna get in my way, not even your God, not even the God of Israel. So the God of Israel says, oh, is that, is that so? Okay, so he just sends an angel out in the night and kills 185,000. And then the king of Assyria flees to Nineveh, and then he is killed. So God knows how to humble and to deal with prideful people who oppose him. Now, Lachish was again destroyed by the Babylonians in around 587 BC. It says in Jeremiah 34, then Jeremiah the prophet spoke all these words to Zedekiah, king of Judah in Jerusalem. When the army of the king of Babylon was fighting against Jerusalem and against all the cities of Judah that were left, Lachish and Asica, for these were the only fortified cities of Judah that remained. So in 587 BC, then there were just two cities that had remained, Asica and then Lachish here, other than Jerusalem, that hadn't been conquered yet. Now the destruction and deportation of the Israelites into Assyria and Babylon were because of their continual disobedience to God. It says in Ezra 5:12. But because our fathers had provoked the God of heaven to wrath, he gave them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the Chaldean, and destroyed his temple and deported the people to Babylon. And then he says also, since the days of our fathers to this day, we have been in great guilt. And on account of our iniquities, we, our kings and our priests have been given into the hand of the kings of the lands, to the sword, to captivity, to plunder, and to open shame as it is this day. So when Ezra came back to rebuild and to reestablish people into the land, then he's confessing his sins and he's saying, the reason why Assyria came, the reason why the Babylonians came was because of our great guilt and our rejection of God. So what are some faith lessons that we can take away from the events that happened here at Lachish and in the area? God gave the Israelites a great victory over the king of Lachish by causing the sun to stand still and by sending great hailstones. Joshua demonstrated great faith in asking God to cause the sun to stand still. So we see that the Israelites conquered when they were right with the Lord. No one could get in their way because God was with them. However, when they disobeyed God, anyone could conquer them because God allowed that. So what about us in our lives? Are we allowing things to happen to us? Are we walking with the Lord? Are we right with the Lord? If not, then God will discipline us. The scripture says the Lord disciplines those he loves. So we need to be right with the Lord. Now God supernaturally protected Jerusalem because of King Hezekiah's devotion and faith and defeated the Assyrians by ordering one angel to kill 185,000 soldiers. So if our hearts are right with the Lord, there is nothing that we should fear. So you have to really think about this, let this soak in. People in Jerusalem, they saw everything that happened 
and they were in great fear. I mean, the Assyrians had captured everyone in the area, and then he had surrounded them. So they were in great fear, and they felt like they were probably going to lose their lives. However, Hezekiah, a godly king, leads them in the path of righteousness and goodness. Hezekiah was a godly king, and so God heard them, and God protected Jerusalem. So once again, the lesson for us is we should fear nothing. If we're right with the Lord, we should fear nothing. However, if we're not right with the Lord, we should fear everything, most whom God, because God will do things to get our attention. God loves us, and he will send these things to get our attention. So the message for us is we need to be right with the Lord once again. So here we are at this tell here. It just uh, makes me in a sense of awe here as we're as we're right here in the midst. I'm going back in time about uh, way back to about 2,700 years ago, 700 BC. And just imagine, just let it soak in for a moment, all the activity the king of Assyria had around, a hundred, we know he had 185,000 troops because they were killed by the angel in Jerusalem. But just imagine all this activity that took place here. Imagine them building this siege ramp. Imagine them conquering uh, the place here. Imagine the people in fear. Then imagine how torturous the Assyrians were to the Israelites. And once again, all because they weren't right with the Lord. They had rejected Yahweh, their God. They had fled and, and worshiped idols. So God allowed this. But so just, just think about all that happened here and the messages for us that once again, we really need to be right with the Lord. If we're right with the Lord, we should fear nothing. And again, if we're not right with the Lord, we should fear everything. So that's the message, and that's the big takeaway that we can take away from this place here at Lachish. So thank you for watching, and may God richly bless you.